Good morning YouTube. How's everyone doing? Hope you're all doing well. Uh, hope everybody had a good Valentine's Day, which was yesterday. Um, if you didn't have a girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife uh, that you spent time with, I hope you got to spend time with your pipe. And uh, on to today's video. Today's video is going to be a tobacco review and uh, the tobacco that I'm going to be reviewing really does not need an introduction but I'm going to give it one anyways. Um, this tobacco <coughs> is considered a standard um, among English blends as far as quality and taste and then it's, it's really considered a standard among all tobaccos just for its craftsmanship and expertise in blending um, it's a hard tobacco to get a hold of and the blend that I'm talking about is none other than Esoterica's Penzance today I'm going to be reviewing Esoterica's Penzance I've smoked it uh, for about three to four weeks and I've smoked it a lot too probably gone through maybe three ounces, two or three ounces, a good bit. The sample that I got uh, was, I, I happened to stumble across an eight ounce bulk package of it at my local tobacconist. I found out they recently started carrying Esoterica blends, which is great because I might go give some of the other ones a try now. So I uh, took it home, started smoking it, enjoyed it, I'm still enjoying it. I've actually got it in my pipe this morning. Um, but anyways, uh, we'll go on with the review. To start off, I'll give you guys a look at the actual tobacco itself. I'd like for that to focus there, because it's not focused. Um, here's the tobacco. Okay, there it goes. And as you can see, it's, it's a very, very dark flake it comes in what they call a melded or melted flake uh, and correct me if I'm wrong if I'm pronouncing that wrong but it's basically just a loosely packed flake and if you pick it up you can see that it, it practically falls apart um, and here is a version of it that I've already uh, put in a, a jar to dip into shook it around a little bit and a uh, beautiful broken flake um, let me set this back up here. The tin note uh, is very rich, very woodsy, earthy, and while I'm thinking about it, the contents of the tobacco are Virginia's, Latakia, Orientals, and Turkish, according to TobaccoReviews.com. And like most Esoterica blends, this has been matured to a certain extent, uh, which, as I'm gathering, is a unique uh, thing across the, the tobacco market, the pipe tobacco market. And as I'm gathering it correctly, not many blenders do that with their blends, but this blend is uh, matured. It's got a very deep, rich, oily, sort of smoky smell. Um, not too uncommon with English blends, uh, with the smelling of the tin alone. But, uh, a note on the tobacco itself, as far as lighting characteristics, you'll notice that when you get, from what I hear, any tin or bulk package of esoteric and tobaccos, they all come extremely moist. And, uh, that's, that was true with my incident, and, uh, I didn't take the time to to dry it out or anything. I just I packed it up. It took me a few extra times. Well, it it took me some extra time to get the the tobacco lit. Uh, I, I simply took a longer time lighting up the char lights. Um, but but it's uh, as as you can see with with my blend already here in in the bowl. It's it's already got nice and gray. And I just I just started smoking it. Um, it burns great even though it's moist. You can dry it out if you wish. I haven't done it, so I don't know if that changes the taste at all. I'm sure it doesn't change too much. But uh, you, can, you can certainly do that. 
and even with the moistness, I haven't gotten too much condensation in the actual shank of the pipe. So it's still been a relatively dry smoke. As far as the tasting notes go, Esotericus Penzance is very oily, very oily, and I think that's due to the Orientals. It's got sort of like an oily texture going on. It's very bittersweet, um, and uh, I'll, I'll get back to that. It's very rich, very creamy. It's got that typical English peaty essence. And every now and then, I pick up uh, what I believe to be a bit of a nutty taste. And there's when I when I hear nutty, I think of Burleys. There's no Burleys in this blend, so I don't know where that nuttiness would be coming from. But I pick it up nonetheless. And in addition, every every now and then, very rarely, but in the middle of a smoke, sometimes I'll pick up a bit of a cigar taste. And I know that's very strange sounding. It's it's strange to say it, but that's what I'm picking up. There's there's nothing like that in the blend. But nonetheless, that's what I get. Um, the base of this blend uh, consists. To me, it switches around between a Latakia base, which you can always taste a Latakia. But sometimes the latter key kind of dissipates in the background and I, I get the Orientals and the Virginias. And for me, it was hard to discern the Orientals alone and the Virginias alone. They, they interplay very well here for me, to my palate. So uh, I, I wasn't able to say, okay, there's the Virginia, okay, there's the Oriental. Uh, they, they just, they melded well. So any taste of one or the other that I got, it was always attached to the other. Um, about the matured Latakia, well, it, it's a matured blend, and obviously there's matured Latakia in it, and I think uh, the, the, the Latakia being matured, it's, it's darker, I think, than, than typical Latakia. There's also less of a sweetness. You always, you always talk about that smoky sweetness you get with, with a good Latakia, just a hint of sweetness, uh, and I didn't get any sweetness with this. It was more of a peaty, smoky Latakia, and I think that maybe because of the fact that it's matured, maybe not. That's just my uh, that's just my stab. And when you smoke this, don't smoke it too fast, uh, because the the taste will go burnt. It'll go sour. Uh, it'll just taste like a burnt mess. But at the same time, don't smoke it too slow. Keep it lit and keep tamping. Uh, because otherwise, the the light streams of smoke that you get, it just it won't produce enough smoke to get the taste that uh, that the blend is offering. Um, on the strength, it's it's uh, it's very it's very much a medium strength blend. I've never had any problems with this, and I tend to be somebody who's more sensitive to stronger, higher nicotine blends, and uh, I've never had a problem with this. So I would rate it a, a solid medium. Um, and uh, it's just the taste alone. It's a very rich taste, which is which is good. That's what you want when you when you sit down to smoke a, a nice English blend. You want a good rich taste that you can, you know, that's going to linger long after you've smoked it. And that's definitely what Penzance offers. It offers a rich, not a high in strength smoke, but a very rich in taste smoke. And I, I think that's great. Um, the taste, for, for the most part, to me, it remains consistent. That could be my underdeveloped palate talking. But it, it remains consistent, and uh, I, to end it off, I, I couldn't recommend this blend anymore to anybody who even sort of likes English Latakia blends. Uh, this is a staple of a blend. It's very hard to get your hands on, if you can get your hands on it. And I'm going to bet that if you do get the opportunity to get some, it's only going to be the bulk. From what I hear, uh, the, the tins of this stuff, the two ounce tins, are extremely hard to find, and I don't know why that is. But, uh, but my, my guesses are if you're going to find it, you're probably going to find the bulk. Go ahead and bite the 30 or 40 $35 bullet. 
and pick it up because you you won't be sad you did in the first few weeks excuse me you'll probably smoke half of it it's just that good and as far as drink pairings I'm a, I'm a big fan of drink pairings with any blend I, I really like uh, a good dark coffee with this a, a good bold dark thick rich coffee preferably unfiltered and I say that because by unfiltered I mean try to find you a French press to drink the coffee with because you know with a not to get on a tangent but French presses they uh, they don't filter out the oils of the coffee bean like a like a drip does and so when you when you get a French pressed coffee you're getting a nice oily sort of you know I guess oily is the best way to describe it coffee and that pairs uh, very well with this blend and finally if you if you're uh, if you're so inclined pick yourself up a nice single malt or blended scotch it is just it's like a heavenly pairing uh, with the with the peat the peat the smoky peatiness and the scotch it just it, it pairs amazingly uh, with uh, Penzance and I'm sure it would with any English blend but this one more so but anyways that's all I got uh, I'm sure you can tell that I'm in love with this blend I, uh, I urge you to seek it out and find it if you haven't smoked it yet and you like English blends because it is, it is a treat. Um, I think that's all I got. Before I leave, I'd like to show you this. I know a lot of you guys are bearded men. So I think you'll appreciate this. This is a coffee mug, but it's not just any coffee mug. It is a coffee mug with a mustache protector. That's right. And uh, believe it or not, I found this for three or four dollars at a uh, at an antique, a big antique garage up in Brooklyn, New York, and I had to get it. It was, you know, at the time I had a mustache, so uh, I figured you guys would appreciate that. I saw one once on a on like a blog or a Pinterest or something, and thought it was neat, but I figured I'd never see one, and I happened to come across one. Anyways, a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, to wrap up, if you can, get some Penzance. It's wonderful. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll talk to you next time.